Hi folks, collaborations are awesome. We did our first one last year with Project Egress, building the Apollo 11 command module hatch door. Uh, and then we've opened up Johnny 5 to so many folks and it's really been rewarding. So Julie threw up a survey on our YouTube community tab about a collaboration that we could lead. And the unequivocal answer was Star Wars TIE Fighter. How do you want to design it? How do you want to make it? And the entries, I've seen a little bit of the teaser footage are awesome from EDM to 3D printing to absolutely amazing machining with some pretty precarious work holding. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. My name is Colton. I'm from Los Angeles, California. My name is Jan. I live in Germany. Hey, this is Justin out of Little Rock, Arkansas. Hi, Code McShare here from Switzerland. I'm machining a TIE fighter for NYC CNC. Hmm. I'm CNC machining a TIE fighter for NYC CNC challenge number one. Hi, I'm Kenny Keith and the force is strong here in Eastern Kentucky. Mike Rowley here at Tracy, California. Check this out. Hey, how's it going? My name is John the Boggs. I'm from Enfield, Connecticut. Hey, I'm Chase Curtin. My name is Carl. I live out in Bremerton, Washington, and I am going to be machining a TIE fighter for the NYCNC project number one. This is Matt with Spectre EDM. Hi, my name is Patrick Henderson. I love Star Wars. That Harry Potter or Star Trek? I love machining. It's winter time in New Jersey. I need something to do. I want to build a TIE fighter. My name is Ryan Gibbs from Farmington Hills. Hello, I'm Fedor in Michigan. Hi, my name is Mike Calabro. I'm from North Reading, Massachusetts. Hey, this is Matt. I work for a hardware development team in Rochester, New York. <coughs> so, Make a tie fight using a manual mill and a manual lathe. You don't think it can be done? I find your lack of faith disturbing. Hi, Code McShare here from Switzerland. I came across this awesome challenge by NYC CNC to machine a TIE fighter and I thought, that sounds like fun, but I need a CNC machine. Alright, alright, I already have a CNC machine, but I thought John always says how much he loves lathes, so it would be a nice challenge to do this on the lathe. So I set out to convert my lathe to a CNC machine as well. Time out. Somebody used this project as the impetus to convert their manual lathe to a CNC lathe? Hats off to you. <laughs> this is. Uh, well done, Internet. I'm actually a computer scientist by training who uh, started machining as a hobby and I learned a lot by following NYC, CNC and other YouTubers to learn about feeds and speeds and all the ins and outs of machining. And I appreciate all the information I could gather there. Now a TIE fighter obviously isn't just round, it has these hexagonal side wings, but I thought it's no problem, we can just take a piece of hex stock and then just turn it out of one piece in one operation. I actually wrote my own CAM software to generate the toolpaths over the last 10 years before Fusion was a thing. Check it out, it's on GitHub, but be warned, it's extremely experimental software and you might be in for a few nasty surprises. There's always the anticipation of hitting cycle start and... Ouch! That happened. I guess I had a few unexpected rapids in there, let's fix that. TIE Fighter is actually not so easy to do in one operation given that it has some very thin sections so you need to plan your operations carefully. But I thought it turned out quite nicely, other than the crash from the start. But then I realized from the side it doesn't really look like a TIE Fighter at all, so something's wrong. And then after some checking I saw that these side wings are actually not symmetrical hexagons but a bit compressed, so a new approach is needed. Then I thought, hey, uh, we're joining the dark side, right? So why not convert my milling machine to a lathe as well? Because lathes are awesome. So 
So I made this attachment to be able to attach lathe tools to the CNC mill head and then we can do uh, milling and turning all in one operation. I mean I'm in Switzerland here, the land of the Swiss lathe, so it's only appropriate that I have a mill turn machine. I just can't afford some of the nice ones. So now we can use the fourth axis to machine the flat side pieces of the wings and then we can bring in the lathe tool to turn out the rest and we can do all of this in one setup. Will it work this time? Let's find out. So I decided to machine the side wings first because they're very thin and I think they would deflect if we would machine them at the end. Nice thing about this fourth axis is that I replaced the stepper motor that usually comes with these with a one kilowatt AC servo so that allows me to do very precise positioning but I can then also bring in the lathe tools and spin it up to a thousand rpm and do lathe operations all in one go. Just a few finishing touches and we are ready to part off. And we're done. That turned out quite nicely, I think. If you want to find out a bit more about these projects, about the conversion of my lathe, the CNC mill build and the mill turn conversion, and other projects around Arduino, software, electronics and machining, check out my channel. I'll be posting more videos in the future. Thanks for watching. Bye. Well done, and thank you for sharing. I mean, this is what makes the internet an amazing place. The fact that uh, you've done all that from CAM software to uh, to documenting your mill conversion, amazing, absolutely amazing. Hi, my name is Mike Calabro, and this is my TIE Fighter for NYC CNC's challenge number one. I made it out of 11 different parts of 6061 aluminum, jip braised together. While I was designing the part in SOLIDWORKS, I was thinking about how I was going to go about this and that, you know, all that jazz. For my goals as being a machinist, I'd like to get back into fifth axis programming, a little design work. What inspired me to be a machinist was I got offered an entry level position a little while after high school to be a CNC operator and I said I'd give it a try because I liked creating things. Here I am 22 years later making a TIE fighter. Well done and I think if there's one thing I gotta pause it, if there's one thing I can get out of this whole journey is to you know I didn't learn about machining until I was 22 years old so if you're out there and you're 10 years old or 15 years old or 20 years old I don't care if you don't like machines, but I at least want folks to realize how many awesome things there are in this whole world of manufacturing, from post-processor from post-processor development in, in JavaScript to manufacturing engineer to mechanical engineer to machining to pneumatics to hydraulics to electronics. That's what is so cool.
Hi, I'm Tom. I'm a self-taught machinist of about three years and I've got a YouTube channel, Tommy Gun Machining. Mainly I do manual machining and I like the challenge of improving and modifying my machines in order to get more functionality out of them. You could say rather than the project car, I've got a project workshop. To make the TIE Fighter I mainly use manual machining but with a little bit of CNC for the detailed greebling. Anyway, let's see the build. The wings were made from mild steel flat bar which was squared up. Off to the side I made an angle template to cut one side of the wings. Because the two sides are parallel, I was able to use the first side to set the second and cut the right angle. Then I faced all this off and the wing shape is complete. To detail the wings I used my CNC router. I used multiple work coordinate systems in order to make three fixtures out of MDF. These serve to locate the wings and then a timber threaded insert for a hold down. I made up a melamine template to check tool paths before working on the actual wings. I have a stop built into my program just after this is cut. <laughs> Raise your hand if you've ever machined through that center screw. This is actually my first time milling steel on the CNC, so I'm taking it easy. I'm using an adaptive roughing strategy in Fusion 360. I don't have a finishing operation, and you'll see why at the end. After cutting the first side, I flipped the wings and detailed the other side. Now to make the body. I put some large centers in at each end and drilled and tapped both ends, and then I roughed the basic shape. I decided to turn between centers because once I started getting details into this body, it would be difficult to hold. Initially by eye, and then using coordinates, I made up the spherical body. And then I turned a taper at each end. I used a file to finish off, and then a cosmetic sanding, and then the body was complete. TIE Fighters in the movies have a hexagon detail on the wings. I decided this would be a convenient hex head to bolt the wings to the body. Now to make these bolts. I did some single point threading, and then parted the bolts off. And then over at the mill I used a hex collet block to cut the hex head. I made the TIE Fighter window from acetal. I initially turned it on the lathe, and then I indicated it in on the CNC router. I then cut the window detail, finishing with a radial toolpath. Over at the mill I drilled a blind hole in the body for the window. Then I used a boring head to scratch a little hatch in the top. Then I super glued the window in place. To really bring out the details, I blackened the wings. I first wiped them down with acetone, and then used a cold blue selenium dioxide solution in three applications. I put a few drops of whey oil on to enhance the black, a quick hit of wet and dry sanding to remove the black from the high spots, and it's complete. Seeing this kind of work is just amazing. So we want to do more of these collaborations. And if you want to take part of it, if you sign up for our newsletter, we're going to announce the next one there. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you soon.